right. something. Yeah. I'm not sure they're going to do a phone call or not. Maybe they don't. You going to do a phone call, Miss Heather? Check, check, one, two. There he is. Good evening. Where are you calling from tonight? I'm calling from the control room. We're actually, I'm walking out the hallway, so uh, Great. long distance. You are long distance. Do you have a do you have a uh, question here to stump Joe? Because Doug won't be here. <laughs> uh, what's the difference between the green and the red? <laughs> the green's the starter, and the uh, red is the uh, reproductive cycle. Ah, uh, makes perfect sense now. <laughs> All right, you can hear him, okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good level there, Colonel. Thanks. Thanks, Todd. No problem. So be sure you got your pants zipped up. No pressure. <laughs> so is your family watching tonight? I got some family that's watching. How about that? We Good don't deal. have satellite at home. You can say, make sure home. you say hi. Good evening, welcome to RFD TV Live. I'm Mark Oppel. Tonight we welcome back Monty's Plant Food. In studio with me tonight, Joe Dedman, uh, one of uh, Monty's many uh, certified crop advisors joining me, and also Doug Hobbs, territory manager for the Central Region. Welcome to RFD TV. Welcome back in your case, Thank you. Joe. Thank you, Mark. Doug, good to have you here, too. We're going to hear from Thanks, you in just a minute, but Joe, uh, maybe some new viewers. This is, uh, I believe, our third program here it with is. Monty's. Great to have you folks back oh. again. A lot of great stories here, uh, but let's learn about yourself first before we get into this great products tonight. Yeah, it's been a pleasure having these shows with you. It's great. Uh, you do a great job at introing us. And, uh, I've been with Monty's. I'm a certified crop advisor. I've been in the industry about uh, 17 years with a local co-op, uh, Southern States. Mm -hmm. Then I've been with Monty's about six and a half years, and uh, we've just continued to develop more and more products to help farmers and uh, I'm very thrilled to introduce our products here tonight. Absolutely, and we're going to do that here in just a minute. Yeah. But I, we, before going on the air, we talked about, you know, this is a little bit lull before yeah. the real busy season. I think, Doug, you even said the last thing a farmer wants to see is us driving up their driveway right, right now. But do we have some, uh, I know this is a time of the year you kind of look yes. forward to the growing season. So yeah. good to have you back, Joe. Thank you. Doug, good to have you here. It's been great to get to know you uh, growing up in, in uh, near your hometown. You've not right. moved too far away. That's right. Live in the same town I was born in. Talk about your background before we get to, again, talk about the products and, and your your work with Monty's. Sure. Well, I grew up in southern Indiana in the Madison area, and uh, I've lived there my whole life. And uh, uh, before working for Monty's, I uh, worked in retail a little bit, and uh, I've also farmed some myself. So I've had some experience outside the ag industry. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Talk, talk about the farm there in Indiana. You're down near the river, I guess. That's is right, that right, right on the river, about halfway between Louisville and Cincinnati, right in that uh, Ohio River Basin area. How are you guys getting along there, You're getting the crop in the ground this spring? Well, I'm trying to hold them off a little bit. It's yeah, I was surprised. You yeah. said that your last frost is not until about now. Yeah, we just froze yeah. here just a couple nights ago a little bit. And that's something. Frost, so, right. And uh, again, uh, for viewers, kind of your connection, uh, you've been with Monty's uh, coming up on you, one of your first, your, your first anniversary. How did that all come to pass? Yeah, well, uh, as I said, I farm a little. So I uh, actually started using the product as a customer first. And I had some issues with some crops. And uh, my local dealer recommended I try some Monty's products. And so uh, through the process of trying the products, I got acquainted with uh, Joe and some of the other people within the company said I needed somebody in the area. And so uh, 
that's how we kind of got acquainted. So. Yeah, and we're going to talk about this later. But I, you know, I think having you here right off the top here, uh, Doug, is important. You know, what what kind of stood out to you when you said you tried it? Mm -hmm. You had some problems. What did you notice right off the bat that kind of hit you and said, "Yeah, this this is what it is what they say it is." Well, initially, uh, I had some pro problems with the soybeans actually becoming a little yellow from water damage, uh, and they snapped out of that rather quickly. So. Uh, the crops recovered. I uh, noticed a lot of uh, Im improved health in the plant, so mm -hmm. we noticed that right off the bat. And then later on, began to notice some other changes as well. Sure. Joe, we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit here. Again, people that may be watching for the first mm -hmm. time, Monty's hadn't, hadn't been able to join us for the other two programs. Let's talk a little, take a step back and talk about Monty's Plant Food, the kind of the, the great history of the company that it is, right. and, and share that with our viewers. Right. And, and we did share that uh, on the last two programs. Uh, Monty's was really originally developed. To, to use on roses, actually, mm -hmm. and in rose care uh, industry, and uh, Monty himself was a rosarian. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we began to bring it into lawn and garden over the last several years, and then uh, within the last uh, 10 to 12 years, we've moved it up into agriculture. We're a very solutions-based company. We uh, base a lot of our uh, development on science. It's, it's proven science how our products will respond uh, to the plant. And then uh, we, we utilize our, our soil conditioners and, and things like that. Uh, many of our products are designed specifically to address the farmer's needs and, and their issues. And then we work hand in hand with farmers to try and find a product or one of our products that will solve some of their products, mm -hmm. their, their problems, their, their issues. Yeah, and, and we want to mention to viewers that it is the, the the company is called Monty's Plant Food. Correct. Correct. <laughs> Rightfully so. It is. It is. And we we usually try and make that distinction that there are lots and lots of fertilizers on the market. There are also a lot of liquid fertilizers. However, we've taken our product. To the next step that it is actually a plant food and the difference is uh, when you put a fertilizer on it's released over time and then the plant takes it up and it feeds it when you put our product on a plant it is an instant plant food it's readily available instantly to the plant and that's why we actually uh, help products or crops to respond and it, much like what Doug was doing he said he saw yellowing in his soybeans mm -hmm. he sprayed our product on and within three to five days it, it snaps right out of it. It works so it's working what you're saying I think it works with the other products that, the, to, oh, that, that producers yeah, yes. our viewers are familiar with. Yeah I mean our products complement so many of the other products that's on the market today I mean farmers have so many products to choose from and when they have a product they've been using and then they also add our products to that, it makes everything work even better. So it, it makes a lot of the other products that's on the market that they actually respond better and work right. better. Yeah, and always the, you know, the, the, the next logical step for reviewers, well, I'd like to hear what were some data and uh, oh, some, yeah. some trials. And uh, right. Doug, you've got some information there, I believe, from the uh, state of Mississippi to share tonight to start off. That's right, Mark. Uh, we were privileged to have the opportunity to work with the USDA on some trials uh, in Stoneville, Mississippi. And uh, those trials took place over the last three years. And uh, we have a rep in the southern area, uh, Aaron Ray, who's been working with the USDA. Mm -hmm. And he's been working with them on some trials in that area on soybeans and cotton. Uh, we're going to show you some of those. And uh, on those trials, uh, again, soybeans and cotton. And we had the uh, foliar plant food applied on those. On this uh, particular slide, we showed a 15% increase in the soybean yield uh, on that particular trial there. And uh, these crops are treated with three to four passes of Monty's plant food. Okay. They also use the uh, liquid carbon product on there as well. So this is in. Uh, so this is soybeans. You also, uh, I think you have. We have uh, a slide on uh, cotton here. That's as right, well. Mark. We also have a slide on cotton. Uh, we're, the same trials were applied to the cotton. And this on this, we showed a 19 percent increase on the yield uh, in the cotton trials. So it was very, very uh, exciting to see that uh, increase. And uh, Joe, he mentions liquid carbon. There, maybe we want to. That's a definition, a kind of a word that we're going right. to hear many times during the hour here. Maybe just a real yeah. quick review of the liquid carbon. If people well, that, again, the liquid watching. carbon is by name, uh, and actually the, the name of the product is liquid carbon. However, it is a, a tremendous mixture of our uh, proprietary technology, mm -hmm. which is based on humics and fulvic acids. So it, it has a proprietary mixture that makes it work the way it does. Mm -hmm. Uh, and on these trials that we showed, this, this was 2009 and 2010 season. We also had a 2011 trial with them, but you remember the drought that hit so bad down south last year? Yeah. 
Well, it really wiped out the trial, so we didn't get any data from last year. However, we are doing trials with uh, USDA again uh, in Stoneville, and so we incorporate not only the carbon on the soil, usually it burned down or something like that, but these, uh, the trials data that we showed on the screen happens to be um, several foliar passes. And, and most of the time during the season, uh, Doug alluded to four or five passes, but most of the time it's usually two that farmers will get around to or have time yeah. to do. You've got some other data, do you not, from that same, did, we, did you show everything you had there from yes. Mississippi? Or yes, yeah. I think we did. Yeah, uh -huh. I think you got all the slides up. Okay, right? yeah. so uh, again, uh, showing uh, soybeans and, and cotton there. Uh, you also have some, uh, I guess we call third party, uh, besides USDA, um, and we want to again uh, mention the yields increasing. Uh, uh, maybe we better talk about some of the benefits uh, yeah. as well as yeah. well as the yield. That's pretty sure. easy to see there, but what yeah. are some of the other benefits here, Joe? Well, that's that's the thing that we see, especially with the USDA research. That's one of the reasons that we showed it because they're a great company uh, to work with. They're very open-minded. They they do trials uh, on a, as a third-party basis that works very well with us. But we're not only see that, but the other benefits happens to be the health of the plant. A lot of times they see less uh, insect pressure. Uh, they'll see uh, a more uh, uh, yield data that comes from it. In fact, uh, on some of the trials there, they, you saw where it was anywhere from 143 pounds extra on cotton to 8.5 bushels on soybeans. And at today's prices on like cotton was a dollar, dollar 20 or so. That really adds up some money, and I think soybeans are in the $12, 13 $14. And yeah, 14. So that, that can really put some extra dollars on the bottom line of just the foliar feeding of these kinds of crops that, that we did get the data from from down south. Mm -hmm. And especially, you talk about down south, staying south here, viewers. Next, we're going to hear from a producer in Alabama, Charlie Herforth, who has also experienced some great results with Monty's. Here's Charlie. My name's Charlie Herforth. Uh, I'm from Coleman, Alabama. We grow wheat, soybeans, and corn, and Bermuda grass hay. Our farm's about uh, 750 acres. About four years ago, I was at one of our seed dealers, and, w and I heard about Monty's, but I didn't know anything about it. And so I asked them, and uh, they got the rep in touch with me, and we discussed it. And uh, uh, he, he told me about the soil conditioner the advantages of it, and I asked him to get me some, and uh, we started using it, uh, application of a half a gallon to the acre in the fall, and uh, we've not looked back since. We tried it on uh, a field of soybeans, uh, a little more than we wanted to, 30 acres. We put it out that fall, half a gallon. Uh, it loosened the soil. We saw more earthworms in the soil. That year, we harvested on, on that particular crop we harvested about 62 bushel of beans to the acre. We apply it with water in the fall, a uh, 20 gallon of water and a, and a quart to a half a gallon of the Monty soil conditioner. If we've used it the year before, we cut back to a quart. Uh, new ground, we pick up pasture land or stuff like that, we'll use a half a gallon on the first year. And uh, in the spring on the wheat, uh, we will we will use a quart of, of Monty soil conditioner with our nitrogen, and it seems like we don't have near the leaf burn when we use it. To use the Monty's products, it's it's real easy to use. They're very water soluble. Uh, they help, I think, keep our sprayer tips clean. Uh, we use about 20 gallon of water, 15 to 20 gallon of water when we apply it by itself. Uh, we do use it in the spring with uh, with Roundup. Uh, we use it on our wheat with nitrogen. We don't have the leaf burn. On the Bermuda grass, uh, we use, it, use the 8168, uh, about the second or third cutting of Bermuda grass, and we'll put a quart to the acre. A lot of times we'll use a, a quart of Monty soil conditioner with it. Uh, and we can get a good cutting of hay by using the soil conditioner and the 8168, a drier year it'll do better than, than a, a wet year, but it, it, it's a good product. Uh, we'll get uh, 70 to 80 square bales an acre per cutting by using 8168. We, we used to rip all of our soil with rippers. Uh, we don't have our, our, our topsoil is not that deep, but we, we did rip it 
for a long time, and we did aerate our Bermuda ground, but we have, since we started using the Monty's, we've quit aerating. We don't, we don't rip any of our ground anymore. We, we strictly use the, the, the soil conditioner. Our ground compaction has gone down. Uh, it seems like our water doesn't stand like it used to. It just, uh, it's, it's working real good for us. I, w I would highly recommend the, the, uh, the Monty soil conditioner and the 8168. Uh, our plant is greener when we harvest it. Uh, it has good, good color. And that's what my horse people are interested in. They want good color and, and, and protein in the Bermuda. Uh, we're, 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 just, we're just well pleased with the, with the Monty's products for, for our investment. Comments there from Charlie Herforth. And uh, a lot of things going on there, uh, Doug. Wow, that's right. a great testimonial. Maybe a couple of things that you want to point out to viewers that really kind of touched you and hit you. Sure. Well, as you said, Charlie uh, mentioned a lot of things there. <clears throat> uh, one of the things that stands out to me is the fact that Charlie's using those products on a lot of different crops. And that really speaks to the diversity of the Monty's products and how it can be used on a variety of crops. And, and that really uh, works well. He also mentioned uh, leaf burn, for example, is something that's uh, uh, been a tremendous way that we've used it in our area, adding it to 10, uh, 1034 and 28, reducing that leaf burn on mm -hmm. the plant. So there's a, there's a variety of uh, crops that's being used on and a variety of uses for the product as well. Yeah, that's something else that kind of caught my ear was they, didn't, they don't rip the soil anymore. That's right. Soil compaction isn't, uh, they aren't seeing it anymore. That's I mean, right. I think to me that's, that's huge. Yeah, the liquid carbon product is uh, uh, the component of that that's, that's working the net capacity. And uh, as it moves through the soil profile, it continues to improve that soil quality. You know, one of the things, Joe, that Doug just touched on there that, uh, that we want to kind of expand on with you here a little bit is the, the, the beauty of the, uh, the product is how well it works on, on a variety of, of right. crops here. Now, right. we're not we're talking uh, wheat or, or, or corn or beans, right. but so right. we'll talk about that a little bit. Well, and that, that also brings in the trials that, that I brought over also from NC State that was also on the corn uh, and wheat trials that we did with uh, Dr. Ron, Ron Heinegger at NC State. As you can see on the screen there, it's, we got around 13.23 bushel increase uh, by using the carbon, actually adding it to his own starter that he had over there. So, so mm, we just so we just complemented his product. That's what we talked about at the top it, of the it show. Is, it yeah. is. So we got a, a, an additional 13 bushels there. And then uh, he's doing trials also on wheat uh, that he did last year with us. And, and we saw an 18% eight, an increase again by just adding the carbon product to some of the things that they were already doing, such as their starters. Or the liquid nitrogen and and Dr. Heinegger is really doing some great work over there especially with our carbon products and then this year uh, he is going to be completing a trial uh, in July I think when he harvests the wheat where he's done an entire program uh, with us on foliar feeding and the carbon and all and the whole work so wow. we're looking forward to that day yeah those the universities i mean uh, again we have to give them a uh, high five yes. here i guess oh, yes. all those land-grant universities yes. uh, mm -hmm. they really help you document okay. uh, yeah. and, a, and a third party independent yeah. uh, some of the things that you're finding in your own yes. studies correct correct you brought a little uh, Test the instrument there. You always say, I think you've, every, every time we've had a program, you say, Mark, I got a little something that's, I want to show the viewers. That's so correct. Nice. Uh, and all of our reps have this. In fact, many of the producers can actually go out and purchase one of these. This is called a refractometer. A refractometer. A refractometer. And, and what you do is you squeeze the juice out of any kind of a plant or leaf. It can be strawberries, it can be uh, soybeans, it can be corn. Uh, and you squeeze that droplet of juice right on this little Let's turn that part. maybe toward, yeah, yeah, yeah there you that go. That little part right here. And you put the flap back down and then it spreads out all over that. You look through the lens and you can adjust the lens. And the, the light shining through here refracts the amount of sugar. And we can, many farmers also call it bricks level. But it's really sugar content uh, in the plant and that relates to the health, the health of the plant. And if we can get uh, bricks level or sugar levels up to around 12% or higher, uh, you really decrease insect pressure. Uh, you, you, in, you, insects don't like sugar that high. high. It's kind of like right. a bad taste in their mouth, I suppose. But it really deters uh, insect pressure on the crop. So about that? Uh, again, it all relates to the health. And this is just an instrument that, that our reps use as well as many farmers use to check uh, the health of their crops and so forth. How about that? Well, thanks for bringing that. And again, well, you say your dealers uh, have all your uh, Monty's 
dealers will have that. Our if, reps. If, uh, reps. Our reps. Uh, uh, yeah. Reps. If a, if a viewer wants to check it out, a couple places yeah. on their up there in their farms. Yeah. Just look up refractometer on the refractometer. Uh, Google it, and it'll come up. Walk around the hall tomorrow yeah. saying, "Ah, oh, refractometer." That's right. <laughs> Uh, Doug, you're going to have to say goodbye to you, and uh, we appreciate your time with us. We're going to have uh, Gary Coughlin coming in here after our That's first right. break. We want to give you an opportunity, as we do all of our guests when they have to leave, uh, some closing thoughts. Uh, we talked about a lot of things with you in a short time, but sure. uh, what do you want to leave with our viewers if you had a chance? Well, Mark, I would probably just say uh, to most of these viewers that, uh, if anything, just give the products and their people a, a shot on their farm. Uh, uh, that's how I became acquainted with the products, and I think that if you would just give the products a chance on a small number of acres, that you'll see the, the difference they'll make, and our people uh, work hard to uh, try to make that difference uh, on your farm. Uh, it's not uh, anything you have to change what they're doing. It's a, it's, a good, it's a good product, and it's a good bunch of people behind them. Well, we've met a lot of them so far, and you're another one, so we yeah. <laughs> hope you'll come yeah. back and see us again, Doug. Thank you very much. Appreciate having you here. All right, we've heard some remarkable results that farmers are getting with Monty's. Now, when we come back, we're going to be joined by uh, Gary Coughlin. Gary is with us on our very first show here. We're going to talk a little bit more in depth about Monty's AgriHance products and what they are and, and how they work. So stay with us. We'll come right back in two minutes. You're watching RFD TV Live right here on Rural America's Most Important Network. What's his first name? Well, well, Steve or Tim? Steve Gum. Steve yeah. Gum. I think I call him Tim. Uh, it's Steve Saying, Gum. I don't know why. We call him Gummy. <laughs> 45 seconds. Oh, God. Yeah, you and I are just sitting here, Gavin. Like Welcome we're back, and it's uh, Gary Coughlin, one of another Monty's certified crop advisors. Okay, we're going to get your background. And uh, 30 seconds. Mm. Remind our viewers. You'll be on camera here. Right? No. About Agrahance. Okay. So we're going to stay with you. Does that bucket look over I think it looks okay. Now you Welcome back to RFD TV Live with Monty's Plant Food. Great to have you joining us this hour and joining us, uh, Gary Coughlin, one of another of the Monty's certified plant advisors joining us here in the panel. We enjoyed meeting Doug, uh, but always good to have you back here too. Good to see you again. Right, thank you. I'm glad to be back. Enjoyed the first time here with RFD. Absolutely. And for viewers uh, seeing you for the first time, Gary, a little bit about your background first, and then we'll talk a little bit about Agrahance. Okay. I grew up in Kentucky in the northeastern part of the state on a uh, burley tobacco dairy farm. I got my degree in agriculture from the University of Kentucky. Went to work for our regional farm supply cooperative by the name of Southern States. I think we've heard of those. Uh, yeah, they <laughs> operate, great people. operate on the east coast and mm. down south. I uh, worked for them for 40 years. Wow. 34 of those were in the field as an agronomist working with their dealers and producers. And then I retired five years ago went to work for Monty's four years ago, and I'm part of the sales support staff. And then in addition to that, Joe and I do training for dealers, uh, producers, our field uh, sales folks, and we co-manage Monty's research farm, which is right outside of Louisville. 
I mean, in fact, he talked about guy, you know, enjoys going on the road with you guys. You're quite a team. I can tell that from our visits with you when you come yeah. here each time. And I know you enjoy each other. And yeah. you've got a great message. I mean, yeah. that helps too. You've got a great product, right. uh, some great results here. Agrihance, we kind of touched on that the last time you were here. Uh, Gary, you were not with us on the panel. You were here in the studio, but not on the panel. Let's talk about Agrihance. Maybe just kind of give a full circle so uh, our viewers can follow along with us here. Okay. Well, Agrihance is a product line that Monty's has developed. It is, uh, they, there's three of them. They are fertility products, but as Joe alluded to earlier, we call them plant foods. That's right. Because they are readily available to the plant. Uh, they do not have to go through a breakdown process. Uh, there are three of them. One is Agrihance S. And there we go. We, Agrihance, there we go, Agrihance S. And Joe introduced that last month, mm -hmm. and that is our starter. That can be used on any crop as a starter in the row, on the seed, or in a tube of two. Extremely low salt content, pH neutral. So that's the starter. And tonight we're going to introduce Agrihance V and R. And Agrihance V is applied at uh, crucial times, important stages of plant growth and development on any crop. And then uh, Agrihance R is applied at a reproductive stage. And we'll talk about that and what that means as far as the the, the optimum times mm -hmm. to apply that. What uh, and Joe, we talked last month about the Agrihance S, as as uh, Gary mentions here. What's it? Why is it important to treat uh, the seed here at that point? Well, you know, we've already begun to experience that out in not only in the south but here in the in the middle part of the country and especially up north. We're running into cool temperatures everywhere, kind of an unseasonal cool start off to the spring. Uh, it's been really slow to, to warm up. The soils are still somewhat cool, but mm -hmm. many people uh, in south and uh, the middle part of the country have already begun to plant. Sure. And that's one of the things that we use our Agrihance uh, S for, uh, specifically when those cool soils are cool and you want to get that plant off to a faster start, a healthier start. That's what this product is designed to do. And again, we've merged together three of our or four of our products to uh, proprietary technology that really focuses on that root zone of that seedling as it's getting started. And you have some uh, some visuals here to help us out here. What are we looking yeah, at here? Here we go, just getting out of the ground. Yeah, it's just coming out of the ground. And, and you see you're, you've got a cool, damp soil right there right now, and, and you've got that little slit still open, uh, and that young seedling come up. Even though we're seeing the seedling on top, you're really wanting to focus on that root being developed under soil. And, and also in the next slide, you see how you, you want that root system really beginning to fully develop on the left-hand side uh, because it really makes a difference further out into the season. Certainly. And then the same thing applies with soybeans, that you really want that, that nodulation to really uh, begin to enhance early on in the season so that it feeds nitrogen to that uh, soybean plant. And the, even the next picture uh, shows the tremendous amount of nodulation that is on those seedlings from just using the Agrihance S product in that row on that seed and really giving a, a tremendous start to the whole season which maximizes farmers yield mm -hmm. potential. Mark if I might add, please. one of the critical things in the development of a crop and the yield at the end of it is getting started off right. Yeah. You've got to get an even germination and you want it all out of the ground within I don't know two three days something like that and, and that's just part of the management cycle that increases this. And this is where right. the starters come in. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You know, you're an agronomist. You guys are a certified mm -hmm. uh, crop, crop right. specialist. I'm going to ask you while you're here, uh, as we sit here and this all this heavy rain, I was asking somebody that this afternoon. So I'm going to mm -hmm. ask you this. We hadn't planned on that, but uh, while you're here, with, with the seeds sitting in the soil when they're wet and there are two or three inches of rain there and they're going to have more rain maybe this week, mm -hmm. what happens to that seed uh, in, in that soil here right now, that uh, are there going to be some stress problems with that early emergence? Well, a, a seed has got enough energy in it that uh, in most cases it is viable in your soil for, I don't know, 10 days, maybe 14 days, something like that. But when you encounter a stress such as this soil, uh, uh, such as these cool temperatures, then you directly uh, reflect the yeah. health of that seed. And after a while, that seed's ready to germinate, and if it's wet, then it's going to develop diseases and potentially rot. And, right. and the other issue is you're talking about the heavy rains also causes compaction a lot of times to the soil. Mm -hmm. Well, this is also is where our Agrihance S is protecting, so to speak, that 
plant zone, that seed zone, from all this compaction earlier uh, happening, even with hard rain. Like so, that. all right, let's get back. We get the crop out of the ground, mm -hmm. and uh, Agrihance V, the next stage here. Let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. Agrihance V is applied at the vegetative stage of any crop. And I think one thing that I've learned over the years, Mark, is that timing is key and timing is everything. Mm -hmm. And there are critical stages in the development. And let's just take corn and beans tonight. But there's critical stages of growth and development of these crops. And if we can start off with corn. Mm -hmm, there we go. Okay. Uh, obviously, the first one is using Agrihance S to get it out of the ground. Right. But the next stage is this stage here, which is V6 six true leaves and at v6 the growing point is above the soil surface and the ear shoots and the tassels actually being developed at that prior slide so now we've moved on up to about a v12 stage or so we are now we are now beginning the um, stage of increased water and nutrient uptake by that plant and actually the number of kernels that's being developed on that ear is being determined. Right there at that stage. Right, at that mm -hmm. stage. So let's go maybe a week to 10 days past that, so we're up to about a uh, B15, and we're now about 10 days away from tasseling. And at that point in time, you're actually determining your yield because the two weeks prior to tasseling and the two weeks after tasseling is the most critical time for nutrients in that plant energy in that plant and moisture uptake. Yeah. And so that's potentially four applications of Agrihance V to that. Yeah. Now is is that practical? Well that's the right thing to do, <laughs> but is it practical? Probably, yeah, probably I ask a that. farmer doesn't have the opportunity to do that. Yeah. So what would yeah. be your, like call it advice or recommendation if he doesn't want to go four passes at the different stages there? Well, one thing that works awful good is that if he will put it in with his, let's say his glyphosate when he's spraying for weeds, uh, that saves him a trip across the field. And if he's coming back later with a fungicide treatment, he can put it right in with his fungicide and do it all at one time without another pass. Mm -hmm. But my opinion is uh, the most critical one is as close to that tasseling time as he can to keep the nutrients and the water and the energy there. You talked about corn, and now we have also soybeans. I think we have a couple of okay. slides there that you're going to show. All right. On soybeans, we've got three or four stages here, the first of which is an R1, and that's actually the beginning of bloom. Mm -hmm. So every bloom at each race seam is uh, potential pods and potential beans. The next one would be R3, and that is the beginning of pod set. The next one we look at would be an R5, and that is the beginning of the formation of your beans. And obviously we want three or four beans in each one of those pods. So again, we got to take away the stress, we got to keep the energy, and we got to keep the nutrients in that plant. And hopefully then at the end of the year, we end up with a field that each wow. of the plants out there looks like this. <laughs> yeah, I could say, when you showed us that, that even, even Heather, our producer, you know, when you see us, you just know it's different right. from, you know, right. you don't see that, mm -hmm. that kind of. So uh, what about, Joe, and the, the importance, obviously, of foliar feeding here when we talk about the, uh, the V, uh, Agrihance V product? Well, and that's where it really begins to show out in the field uh, uh, because the foliar feeding is when we address the needs of the plant and we also use the foliar feeding, especially during the vegetative stages, to help ward off uh, stress against the plant uh, the, so that it maintains the high yield potential that we've bought the seed for, we've planted in the ground, put all the fer fertilizer on. Mm -hmm. So our products do act as a tool, a management tool, to help farmers manage the yield potential that they want out of their crop and relieve some of these stresses that happen to it. Yeah, deficiencies, I guess, yeah. and you have some examples we, of what, we the, do. what we, they look like. Yeah, here. I've brought some slides on some deficiencies. Uh, here's uh, one that really relates to what you just got through talking about. The, the hard rains early in the season really seals the ground uh, in this particular case, and it, it robs the oxygen from the root system. And then also, it, it also helps or keeps the plant from being able to take up some, nu some nutrients. Mm -hmm. uh, the next slide uh, has to do with uh, sidewall compaction. 
that we have the slits in the ground and, and as you can already see this is a young plant but it's starving from, for some nutrients because the sidewalls are compacted that we show in the next slide or two about what really happens underground is you get that wedge shape or that V effect because the sides of the soil are so compacted because oh, so the, the root yeah, goes they more, cannot, it yeah, can't grow out in a, in a circle it just grows in a V and I think the next slide even shows uh, here's layers of compaction in the soil that, that inhibits the, the plant from being able to put the root system down into the soil. And so even on, on some of this others that you see here, this is potash deficiency that is showing up in corn. This is early corn, and so it has some compaction issues. And potash deficiency always shows up at the outside edge of the leaf and then works toward the center. Hmm. So that's one way a farmer could go out and look at his field and say, well, that is potash deficiency because it's showing on the edge of the leaves and then coming into the center. On the next slide, uh, we show about zinc deficiency, that these stripes that they, they see in the leaves, and a lot of times this happens in the cool part of the early season. The plant's not able to have the root system there or to, to the soil to break down those nutrients and let the plant uh, take it up. So you will see deficiencies like that. Then also the next one it, it shows about nitrogen deficiency. This is a little further along and I put that leaf up in the right hand corner to show you it's it's really the opposite of potash deficiency. It goes right down the center. center of the leaf and then it works to the outside edge and that is a recognition of uh, uh, nitrogen deficiency. I think the next slide even shows a, a really kind of a severe case that the plant itself is robbing nitrogen because it can't get it out of the soil. It's robbing it from its lower leaves and taking it to its upper leaves to try and survive. Joe, could I interrupt sure. one second there? Sure. Mark, as a crop starts reaching maturity and its sole purpose is to reproduce itself, mm -hmm. okay? It's got to have water and nutrients from someplace in order to fill out the ear sure. on a corn. So right. it starts robbing itself from the bottom to try to reproduce itself and form that ear. Correct. Wow, how about yeah. that? So, so these are some of the things that farmers encounter each and every season Sure. Uh, with these nutrient deficiency. Next one, is, we've jumped to soybeans. This is a picture of a potash uh, along with manganese deficiency showing up in, in this plant. You see the manganese showing up in the really dark veins that's showing out in the leaves. Can I interrupt yeah, you again? Sure. Right. <laughs> Mark, this was taken from a producer not far from where I live, and he called me out last year, and he had an entire field that looked like this, and he said, I'm going to lose it. What is it, and what are we going to do? So we actually went in and sprayed this with Agrihance V, and he called me, I don't know, a week to 10 days later and said, you've got to come out here and that field was as green as green could be. Is that right? Mm -hmm. In and a he, week. And he told me, uh, yeah. maybe two, two weeks, but something yeah. like that. But he told me at harvest time, he said, you saved my beans because that field ended up making 50 bushel. Mm -hmm. And that's what they looked like at one time. And the next, I think the next slide also shows potash deficiency also. And it, it shows up the same in either, either crop, whether it's corn or soybeans. It always starts at the outside edges and then goes in. And, and I think that's most of our... Wow. A lot of great information there. We're going to hear from another uh, of your producers. Yeah. This is uh, from Kentucky, uh, Gary. It's from mm -hmm. Shelbyville, Kentucky. Grant Melton. I'll watch again uh, and listen to what Grant has to say about these great products. I'm Grant Melton. I farm uh, about four, five, six hundred acres of farmland here in Shelby County, Kentucky. Shelby County is located between Louisville and Lexington. We have uh, have all that acreage split up between corn, soybeans, and uh, a little bit of hay. My first experience with Monty's was uh, when I rented a farm late in the planting season. Uh, the farm had laid dormant for many years. I planted the crop, forgot to inoculate the seed, and what I ended up with was a crop that couldn't take up the nutrients out of the ground. An agronomist uh, told me that my best option would be to replant it. Subsequently, after three applications of Monty's, I ended up with uh, 35 bushel beans at the end of the year. Monty's is about as easy to use as anything you could ask for, uh, especially when you're spraying it with, say, Roundup, coming over top of beans with Roundup. You just put it in the tank, 
you don't have to add anything with it uh, just put it in the tank with the other chemicals and head to the field as far as the return on investment with Monty's the thing that Monty's has helped me with is in the last few years I've seen we've had some long periods of either dry weather or long periods of just excessive heat and we've been able to apply Monty's uh, during those times and I've noticed that the plants during like a, a prolonged time of dry weather where your plants are starting to shut down and just sitting there waiting for moisture an application of Monty's you know won't take the place of a good hard rain but when you do get that good finally get that good hard rain you'll see those plants bounce back so much quicker and they take off growing your yields reflect that at the end of the year I like the ease of, of using Monty's uh, it's so easy to use and it's so versatile the way you can it's you can just mix it with Roundup and it's not like you have to make a special trip over the field just for Monty's you can use it when you're applying your other chemicals and uh, you don't have to make a special trip just for it I would say anybody who has considered using it they, they, they need to at least try it Try it on a, a small scale. Try it on, uh, try it during a dry spell. Try it during a hot weather. See how their plants respond to it. If they have some ground that is lower in fertility, by all means, follow their traditional fertilizing uh, methods, but give it a little spike with monies, and I'll bet money that they'll see a difference. Comments from Grant Milton from Kentucky. Uh, couple of points that hit you if we move on here from well, what you heard. Well, really, I think Grant summarized everything we just got through talking about. He, he's talking about using it as a management tool throughout a growing season that he saw a stress in the crop. He went out and sprayed it on it. It rescued the crop. Again, he used it as a management tool. I think he sprayed it three times. Um, and so this is he did exactly what our products are designed to do. So. I think that was the testimony in itself. And Gary, uh, his farm is not too far from the Monty's right. Plant Food Research Farm, and that kind of lets us talk about some of the research at the farm. Okay. We have about 35 uh, acres under uh, cultivation and production. Uh, this past year, we had uh, about 80 trials on corn and about 80 trials on soybeans. We uh, have tried all kind of different combinations of our products, and as Joe mentioned in the first segment, uh, putting our products with some products that farmers are currently using, such as 28, 10, 34, 0, etc. We, uh, Mark, we're not putting in 20-foot plots uh, as, as some folks do on their research. The length of our plots are about 300 feet long. And what we're trying to do with that, we're trying to assimilate as much as possible real field conditions out there, different soil types, variabilities across that soil type. Mm -hmm. So we have done a lot of things. That's like our own little, uh, I hate to say PlayStation, Joe, but that's like our own little lab <laughs> out bet. there yeah. That, yeah. that we're trying all kinds of combinations, different rates, different timing. And what we're looking for is we're trying to find that optimum uh, set of circumstances for a farmer to increase his efficiency and his productivity. We've talked about uh, the AgriHance program, the starter, the S, yes. uh, the V for the vegetation, and that leads us to the third, the AgriHance R. Right, so. and that, again, this is a, a blend of our proprietary products that we've made up for the actual, the reproductive cycle of the, the crop, and mm -hmm. we saw some of that on the, the last uh, slides that we had up, that when you do come in at the bloom stage or you come in at a, a pod set where it's filling the pod, uh, a lot of times farmers want to push their crops to get higher yields. Well, if you have those already on the plant, then stresses during the rest of the season could actually rob that away from it. So our product goes in as a management tool, helps put energy into that plant to hold all that energy in, and help it to fill out the pods, to fill all three beans or all four beans, or, or even to help hold the uh, blooms on at, at the earlier stage. So again, it, it's, during, it's a management tool during that reproductive cycle uh, of the plant, uh, growth of the plant. And Gary, AgriHands V and AgriHands R applied uh, in the same way? 
They are. Uh, they'll mix with uh, herbicides. They'll mix with fungicides when you're putting them on. They are both applied at the same rates, so we're looking at 24 to 32 ounces, and that's a pint and a half to a quart. And um, you can apply, apply them at this potential growth stage that is crucial to it. Now, we hear farmers uh, quite a bit say, there is no way that I'm going to put on a quart per acre and influence my crop. But what we're looking at is we're not putting on something one time and it's going to last year round. We are feeding that crop at a specific time because timing is everything. Mm -hmm. And that crop is going to use that and, and as far as its energy source and I don't know, three weeks or something like that. And at that point in time, a farmer has to decide what, uh, how much that has helped me and should I go ahead and make another application based upon the circumstances that he has in his field at that time. Mm -hmm. Right. Wow, makes sense. We have one more uh, testimonial. This is uh, mm -hmm. audio we had a chance earlier. Uh, again, uh, one of the customers, a dealer in Texas, mm -hmm. Charles Tenbrink, uh, with Tenbrink Ag Sales. He's in Vernon, Texas. We listen in this case. Uh, Charles on the telephone with us and what he had to say. Charles Tenbrink from Lockett, Texas. That's between halfway between Dallas and Amarillo. It's all sandy land. But we in this country here, it's mainly wheat cotton, alfalfa, peanuts, grasses, either for pasture or for baling, and cattle. From a man at Comanche, Texas, told us about it. So we got enough, my neighbor and I, we got enough to do half a pivot of alfalfa. And the half that we put it on Two. made an extra truckload. The RFV, the food bay, was up nearly 200 points. This got our attention. So then we got enough to do everything with it ever since. It's pure. If there's no salt, you don't have to worry about eating your equipment up, eating your pivot up, or anything like that. One of my neighbors here, he, he uses it on, behind his planter, and another one uses it on his drill. They inject it, and they were using stuff like, like 32, 28, things like that with the high salt index. And it was destroying the discs, the drills, the bearings, and all that. The, this does not. Well, it doubled production on that half a pivot of the alfalfa. It made one extra load of hay off a half a pivot, which was which was is nearly double from what the other side did. And it has worked well on the wheat. Seventy bushels last year. Of course, this was irrigated last year. It's awfully dry here. But where we had used this and the ammonium sulfate, we made 70 bushels an acre on low sand, and that's very good for this country. It didn't get a foot taller. I mean, you know, everybody, or I, I'm of the mindset that if you put out something, it should be taller. Well, it, it doesn't necessarily get taller. But when you go to bailing, when you go to thrashing, when you go to stripping, whatever, there's more commodity there, which pays for itself right quick. We spoon feed it through the growing season, keep the plant healthy, and keep the plant healthy, then it produces more. It's a quality product, there's no doubt about it. And and it it, it does what they say it'll do. Try it. That's all you need to say is try it. Once they try it, they will be convinced they will they will buy more modest products. Charles Tenbrink from Texas, and uh, we uh, heard a lot of great testimonials tonight via telephone or video. We have uh, our telephone lines open up now. We, uh, I know uh, we've got a lot of information tonight, but we'd like to have you join us with questions you might have with the time remaining here. Toll free 877-731-6733. Lines open now, 877-731-6733. We'd like to hear from you before our program is over. Quick thoughts that you might have, Joe, from Charles uh, uh, comments there in Vernon, Texas. Okay. Charles brought out a couple of good, really good points. Uh, he mentioned about our product being used through the center pivot and, and through irrigation equipment. Uh, he also brought out the fact that it's non-corrosive. It doesn't eat up the equipment. It's all that. It's a very safe product to use. Uh, he mentioned on the wheat, how much wheat, extra wheat he got. Uh, it, it added to the tillering. It helps wheat to tiller more. Uh, he also mentioned about uh, the hay, that it nearly doubled uh, production on one particular side. Um, these aren't things that we can necessarily guarantee, you know, is this going to happen every time? But 
again, our products work in that kind of manner that you use it as a management tool and you begin to see the results. And, and Charles probably said it best when he said, just try it. Try it. It, it does work. So. All right, Agrahance. Our program tonight, Agrahance S, which he, uh, he had talked about before here, Agrahance V and Agrahance R, we introduced tonight as well. Lots of information here. We're going to take our last break and we come back. Uh, Joe and Gary will be here to uh, take some of your questions here. Our, again, toll free number for you to join us live here tonight, 877 731 6733. Let us hear from you with the time remaining. We'd love to hear from you and uh, maybe you be our next success story. We'll come back in two minutes right here, RFD TV Live continues right here on Rural America's Most Important Network. Stay with us. Good job. All right. No, I know. We did get a lot of information on there, so. Oh, yeah. And, you know, with you uh, saying if I could then say something, interrupt, and no, that's, that's great. We were, we, uh, you know, we're not going to, we'll probably get five, four or five calls at most. We're make, we might yeah. just, if they get them, I think we should take them right away rather yeah. than. Uh, right. we. Okay. Uh, do I need to give the number coming out too or not? And then we're talking about the, you know, as soon as you get one, you let me know. We'll take as many as we can. Because maybe we can, you know, maybe we can start at 56 and just do a quick, quick wrap. Maybe take one more phone call rather than take three minutes to say good night. Would just be a quick, good night. So take the best one. Yeah, and let's. Uh, looking at. Uh, Look at camera one, Gary, when you start, when you answer these questions, and maybe try to keep them as short as we can, just so we can get through as many as there are. And when you come back? What's that? <laughs> Take a picture. I will. Bye See you. Th Bye -bye. Thanks. Oh, I'm going to ask you about cost, I guess. Maybe this first, first caller? Is that okay? Is it, oh, they want to ask, is it okay if they ask about cost for soybeans? Yeah. Yeah, he says bring it. <clears throat> Ten seconds. It's been a fast hour here. It always is. There are friends from Monty's Plant Food. Lots of good information here. Welcome back. It's RFD TV Live with Monty's Plant Food. Again, our telephone number for you to join us with our time remaining, 877 877- 731-6733. Lines are open right there at that telephone number, and we look forward to hearing from you. A lot of information here, uh, Joe, and uh, people wondering where they can get the products and, and uh, the nearest right. location near them. Let's answer that before we get to our well, phone calls. Well, we have, we have very, uh, lots of uh, independent dealers across the country that they can go to their independent dealers, see if they do carry it. They can always call us directly at Monty's, and we'll put them in touch with a dealer near them. But we also uh, are marketing it through uh, uh, the co-op here in the Southeast Southern States Cooperative. And then we also market it through participating Tennessee uh, Farmers Cooperative, um, uh, Missouri Farmers uh, Association, and also pr through participating Growmark uh, dealers as well. Very so, good. Let's Mark, go to, can I uh, Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something I failed to mention earlier was we we'll always get questions on container size. And, and the Agrihance products come in two and a half gallon containers, two by two and a half. They come in 30s, or they come in two and a half, a 275 mini bulks. Yeah. All right, great, thank you. And you have the uh, two and a half gallon mm -hmm. right there tonight yes. that you brought with you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to Illinois. And uh, David uh, is up first yeah. tonight. Thank you for calling, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just uh, getting an idea of what it would cost me at a, at a rate of a half a gallon per acre on 20 acres. Uh, Just to try it. David, I'm assuming you're talking of the liquid carbon product. That's the, the product we use at a half a gallon. Or you, if you are talking about the Agri uh, it the carbon would run around uh, $10, and the Agri product would run around $14. All righty. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate the call here. Again, our toll-free number for you to join us with our time remaining. 
is 877-731-6733. Let's go to Mississippi. Larry, thank you for calling. Your question for our panel. Yes, sir. I was just checking to see if you can use it on turf grass. Turf grass. Oh, yes, very much. It complements uh, turf grasses, uh, sod farms, uh, even your own lawn and your, your front yeah. yard, backyard. Uh, it, it helps to build the root system, and, and that's what turf people are usually after, is they want a bigger root mass, uh, especially uh, digging it up or, or using it as sod or, or just making your turf thicker. Yeah. And but what, this, is one, ahead, this is one case, though, a turf, he needs to be using both the liquid carbon mm -hmm. as far as conditioning his soil and feeding that microbial population to enhance the development of the root system and then at the same time coming back and spraying it with Agrihance V mm -hmm. to supply the energy and the plant food to it. Right. And his local uh, representative his, uh, in his area yes. um, would be able to help him out. Should be able to. And yes. answer questions about turf. That's the great turf farms yeah. like you said. Even, yeah. and, the, and, and it's where back, we started in the backyard there in yeah. the rose bushes yeah. many Correct. years ago. All right, Ethan from Virginia, thank you for calling. Your question. Oh, J sorry, John from Mississippi. I was jumped again a little bit there. John, you're up next. Thanks okay. for calling. Go ahead. Hey, guys, I'm a soybean producer uh, for the northeastern part of the state, and I was wondering, is this a product that's just going to supplement your crop, or can you actually do away with your uh, commercial fertilizer and just mm -hmm. use this? Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, John, no. Uh, as Joe said several times, we complement what you're currently doing. So you go ahead and you get your soil test done just like you normally do. You put on your NPK, whatever it might be, your micronutrients, just like you always do. And then you use the Monty's carbon to condition your soil. If you can, put that on in the fall of the year for the next year's crop. And if you're in position to do it right now, well, you're obviously going to get some benefit out of it for this spring. Mm -hmm. And then uh, use the Agrihance uh, product, whichever one pertains to your situation, uh, as you need it. But no, we, we do not recommend that you take away all the fertilizer that you normally do. All keep, right. keep doing the practice that you're using. All right, let's go to Tennessee. Mark, thank you for holding your question now. Yeah, on your, I mean, the beans are in the R3 stage. What uh, product do you put on and how much do you put on? Well, the R3 stage is exactly some of the photos that Gary was talking about. Uh, and we go in with the Agrihance R product at, at a half a gallon to the acre. And that really boosts the energy into the crop. It, it helps it to hold, hold on or continue filling out the pods here at R3 and put bigger beans and more test weight. Uh, into the crop. So again, uh, it be the Agrihance R product. Mark, I have read in articles from time to time that in stress conditions that a soybean plant can actually abort 50 to 75, uh, 50 to 70 percent of its blooms. And when that happens, I mean, let's face it, you're hurting your yield big time. So we want to protect every bloom that we can protect. All right, real quick, we have one more uh, chance to get uh, one more call, rather. Ruben from New Mexico, you made it. Thanks for your call. Your question. Yes, sir. My question is, is uh, how can I apply it to alfalfa hay? Alfalfa hay. Oh, to alfalfa yes, hay? Uh, usually we recommend uh, right after the cutting that you allow three, three to five inches of regrowth because the, the product is absorbed through the leaves, and then you want... Uh, you can actually apply it again if you want before you cut it. But usually farmers just apply one application after, after they're cutting. All right. We have just about a minute or so to kind of get some quick final thoughts from each one of you. Gary, thanks for being here. Good to see you again. Uh, of all the things we talked about, your final thoughts. I mentioned this earlier, but timing is everything in the development of that crop. And pay attention to the growth stages of your crops and what's going on at that particular point and reduce every stress that you can. Uh, Monty's products are science-based technology and through that proprietary technology they have, they will just increase the health of that crop so much. Good to see you again, as Thank always. You. Hope to see you back sooner than later. <laughs> Joe, will have a last word. Well, 
we've just been enjoying being on the program so much. Oh, and, I, and I hope we have conveyed the message to our farmers of how they can use Monty's products as a management tool to help them achieve and maintain the high yields that they're looking for because we've got to try and put more dollars back into the farmer's pocket. And we think that our products at Monty's can help do that. We're very thrilled to work with our, our producers and our dealers across the country, and, and we are con uh, continuing to find products that provide solutions for their Very issues. good. Great to have you folks here. Yes. Welcome again Thank to you. RFD Mark, TV. We're just glad to have a partnership you. with you fellas and the Cold Company. So, all right. Well, again, time to wrap things up. Farmers who have used Monty's products are excited about the results they've been getting. You've seen and heard some of those, and you can find out why as well. For more information, you go to Monty's. You go to montysplantfood.com or call that toll-free number 800-978-6342. Good night from rural America's most important network.